Hey, colors out there. Welcome back to another episode of Combo Coloring Tips and Tricks. Uh, today's episode, uh, we're going to be talking about a couple uh, different special effects. We got uh, explosions, and coming up, we got some fire as well. Uh, close enough um, in thinking, we're going to put these together. Um, but first off, we're going to tackle explosions because it's going to kind of carry over from our last episode, which was episode 17. Mm -hmm. uh, we're learning about clouds. And a lot of the uh, explosions you'll have, uh, you know, the smoke and everything like that. So kind of similar. Um, this piece here is an old G.I. Joe cover. It's done by John Boy Myers and inked by Mark Irwin. Uh, I have like some nice explosions, uh, exactly the stuff I wanted to talk about. So uh, grab that. I'll uh, put up links uh, to their DeviantArt accounts in the description as always. So you can find out uh, more of their work. Let me go ahead and just do a color layer. I'll just start off with a simple background first, just to give us some uh, atmosphere uh, for these where these explosions are going to be taking place at night. Um, and just imagine, so we have like some some flames. So maybe it's like really close to touching down. Uh, so I think what we'll do, we'll have like some uh, nice lighting coming. Oops, let me get a new layer on top, uh, so you can see what I'm talking about. I have, have like a lighting coming up this way, uh, you know, nice warm color. Maybe counteract that with a, a cool color coming down. I think that'll give us a, a, an interesting look. So let's just grab our gradient tool. There you go. Um, like a nice orangish color. Maybe too much. Let's cut it first with a little bit of pink or purple. We'll get like a nicer, a nicer blend into the warm colors. So, yeah, I kind of dig in that. We'll switch from a uh, linear gradient to a radial, and we'll just put in. I like too. I don't know. I like too fruit loopy now. Let me calm that down a little bit. This is like what I'm like most of the time when I'm coloring my stuff. Just going back, changing it. Oh, let me see how this looks. No, nope, don't like it. Go back, change it again. So I think that gives us enough, enough warmth down at the bottom. And then... Uh, let's go with the soft airbrush. And just kind of lightly put in a little bit of clouds or whatever. said lightly right there so it has something going on but not too much where it's distracting again the main drama is going to be I guess it's a duke here in the, in the foreground and uh, you know so we don't want to do too much in the background to take away from that I want a nice dark color behind that way there when I pop uh, the colors into these uh, explosions really gonna uh, make them pop out from that background so I'm getting a little bit of darker color back here um, so I think we're good on that so let's go ahead I think we'll do a bit of dark muddy color oops we get some blues and purples in there, because again, it's going to kind of reflect the uh, what we have going on in the sky. It's going to reflect those colors. So we'll start out like that, and maybe we'll go. I'm not sure where I want to start from. I think that looks looks good. Start with a dark brick red. Let's kind of airbrush it in around the explosion itself. I'll give us like a nice uh, a nice base to start from, I think. And it's just like we're painting clouds, you know. You're just gonna remember where your uh, where your light source is coming from. In the case of these guys, it's gonna be uh, from the center. 
So we just got to remember that. Um, what I'll do is I'll just take the smoke and I'll just got to put it on another layer for now. And I'll lock it down. Oops. There we there, I can make my selections and everything like that and not have to worry about uh, painting over everything else. So here's like one way uh, we kind of do it. Um, just making quick, uh, quick lasso selections. And just to, uh, you know, just keep it in mind where light source is coming from. And we'll just start to uh, kind of building it up in a little bit here. So we'll get to uh, another color. I think right now, yeah, you know, my lasso's on the feather of one. Not necessary, but I, I think it helps. Uh, uh, makes the uh, uh, smoke look a little, little softer. But uh, same thing with everything else I'm showing you guys. It's all up to your own. Uh, personal tastes, you know, there really isn't any right or wrong way to do things. Just trying to give you a, a little bit of a leg up. So again, we're just building up the, uh, uh, the explosion here more towards the center, brightening up our colors. I'll probably started out a little bit too dark, so I'm going to brighten it up a bit. I think it, you kind of see the shape of that, of the explosion there. Let's see how that looks like brightened up. Oops, just you. I'll go with the, the Dodge or something. That's looking kind of cool. There's more in the middle. Alright, so we have that. And let's go in on... Uh, these guys. It's going to be the same thing, just uh, I think I'll just go with the zero feather on my lasso this time. So we're going more with the explosion itself. So I'll copy this uh, first bit and I'll put that on its own layer. and just make it easier. Um, oops, make a selection of it. And I'm just going to lay down a little bit of uh, airbrush here first. So make my gradients work a little bit better. Oops. Now I'm just kind of going in really quickly with my uh, with my lasso tool, just making quick selections. A little bit of airbrush. And then cutting in a little bit more than where my selection was last time. And a little bit more airbrush, I don't know if you could see. It was very faint. Um, at this point here, we can also start uh, lightening up the color some. Let me get some, you know, a little bit of yellow going in there. And again, it's just a, a making a selection, a little bit of airbrush. And you're just building up that color. And then we get a uh, switch to a lighter color in a second here. Uh, see here, like, you get asked about blending a lot. And like here, my, uh, my opacity is at 100%. My flow was at 30%. And it's all being controlled by the uh, much pressure I'm putting on the uh, work on a Cintiq. Uh, you know, but if you have a, a tablet or, or whatever, it's going to work the same. You know, it's, you, use your pressure, and it's a lot of practice, really. Um, you know, it's not just coloring more pieces and, and calling it a day. Um, you know, practice just on a blank canvas, and uh, you know, just keep on doing it and doing it, and eventually, you know, you'll get the hang of it. You'll see what settings work best for you. Um, 
All right, so we have that guy. Let me do a little bit of dodge in the middle, kind of brighten it up a little bit. So that's pretty good. So with all those different selections, a little bit of lasso and everything, that's really going to give a little flame effect, uh, you know, add a lot of energy to it. So let's go to, oops, I forgot to do these guys. So let's do that. I kind of talked about it in, uh, I think it was the last brush spotlight, or maybe it was the uh, the clouds video, where I was uh, wanting to do a a Q and A covering a lot of a lot of questions you guys had. So, you know, again, if you uh, have any questions you you'd like answered, um, send me a message on my on my account on my YouTube account, or uh, uh, you know, send me a message over on the DeviantArt. And uh, you know, I'm in the process of putting a putting a list together, and and uh, hopefully we get enough to where I can make it make a, a decent sized video. And that'll be interesting for you guys as well. Um, yeah, I've gotten some uh, pretty good questions so far, so I'm looking forward to to doing that. So again, we're just going in with our uh, with our lasso, just making quick selections, just following the shape. Of the uh, the explosion here that's laid out for us, and uh, same thing. I mean, like if a different artist, I I, I don't think I'd color it the same way. So it, it all depends on what the style is. Um, you know, on template, totally different styles. So on those, I would just go in there and I just uh, paint it all with a brush, not using any any selections or anything like that. But you know, again, that's what that. That's what that project called for, you know, um, the art style on that one. Oops. All right, now let's go with a little bit of dodge here and brighten that up a bit too. I think that looks pretty good. We'll leave like these little bits. We don't need to go in there and render that. It's too small and it's just not important enough for the whole co for the whole cover. So that's fine as is. Um, another thing I like to do, like it'll add a, a bit of pop to it. We'll get a a new layer on top of our of our line art. Let's create a a, a clipping mask. We could go in. Uh, let's try this color. Get a pencil brush. I'll just go in and kind of paint these lines for the explosion bits. If you wanted to spend time, you could do the uh, the clouds as well, or the smoke clouds. Uh, you could go in and do those a different color if you if you wanted to. Uh, just for demonstration purpose, purposes, I'm just going to show this little bit. Um, because we had that clipping mask on there, what we could do as well is we could just go in with our our lasso tool. Probably speed this up a little bit here. And just select the line art that we want to color and then just fill that fill that in. I'll speed things up a bit. And uh, a big, big part of this as well is have making sure you have your line art on a separate layer. And it's not just set up as a multiply or anything like that. Um, you do it like that, you can't really get a lot of these other effects and stuff. Uh, you know, yeah, it's a quick way of doing it, but not the best if you want to really push your work. I know some of this uh, orange color is getting lost. I'm going to adjust it in a second, just using it to fill it in. Oops, you like that.
this bit here. And just a little bit left. And get these little bits here as well. All right, that looks good. Uh, let's go ahead and darken it a little bit because we don't want to get the uh, we don't want to lose the line. We just want to color it, that's all. Let me darken this one a little bit. I think that looks good. Um, and then to finish it off, to really make it pop off, what we could do is on top of everything else, we'll set up, um, we'll do a lighten layer. Let's we'll pick a, a, a nice red color. We'll see how that looks. Uh, let's go back to our soft airbrush. That's really just going to make that explosion glow and pop off the page. And then we can even go like in the middle, like a little bit more of the, of the orange color, make those little bits really, really warm. So you can see uh, just in a, a couple minutes, you know, we're able to, to color that up, make it look really nice. Um, so that's usually how I'll approach uh, explosions. Again, you know, depending on the artist, you'll have a different look, but I think the concept is the same. Uh, so let's see. I think, yeah, I'm just let me save this one real quick. And let's go to fire. Automatically, when I think fire, I always think of Ghost Rider. Um, Say so I found this piece. Um, this one here was penciled by Kanan White and inked by uh, Joseph Silver. And again, I'll put their uh, their uh, DeviantArt links in the description as well. And um, kind of wanted to talk a little bit with fire. Uh, again, it really depends on on the artist. Uh, you know, go like super realistic and. Uh, a lot of times when I color comic books, I, I don't, you know, I'll do like my lasso selections and stuff like that. I'll show you guys in a second. But I also kind of wanted to get a little bit into like photo manipulation. Um, kind of hesitant to because I know a lot of people like to really abuse it. And there's a lot of other things to consider as well. Um, you know, if you're using stock footage, make sure you pay for it, especially if it's going to print. Uh, that's the last thing you want is a, is a lawsuit on your hands or uh, an editor or word getting around the industry that you know you're not safe to use because you, ultimately they're going to be responsible for that the companies you work for and if you're trying to get away with it trying to be slick it's not the way to go um, so yeah if you're going to use photos make sure it's something you shot yourself or you have permission to use um, so with that, <laughs> let's go ahead and get into some photo stuff. Um, with the layer styles, I think it's really great. Uh, we just go in. I know a lot of people are like, oh, but wait, there's all this black and everything like that. How are we going to get like the nice colors and everything? Um, I'll set it to uh, set it to screen. So now we have just the flame. So I don't want it to be as well. Like, all right, there we go. We're done. He has a fire hat. Uh, you know, I think you still have to make sure you match the uh, match the artwork. Watch where it's going and everything. And there's some great great uh, uh, tools for that in Photoshop as well. Uh, if you just make a selection, and it's uh, Command Shift X. So it's probably, I think it's Control shift x in uh, PC. Uh, that's going to bring up our Liquify. Or you could go up to your uh, 
let me cancel this. You go up to your filters, and it's under there, liquify. Um, but what we could do with this, we have this, on default, this is what it's gonna look like, but if you hit show backdrop, then you'll be able to see like all your other layers and everything. And what we could do with this, we just start moving, moving everything around. We can get this flowing like with the, uh, with the artwork and everything. It's a pretty neat tool. Uh, I wouldn't just use one uh, photo though. Like I'd make sure, uh, make sure you know you have it, and then just manipulate it. Like, oh, okay, here's one. Let me go ahead and, and pull up some more fire here. So we have this, and then, uh, oops, we kind of transform this into place now. And then there's like another tool called Warp that we can use. Like, oh, okay, let's bring it up this this way here. Bring out this. We could tuck this guy down here underneath the skull. In the meantime, bring this up, and then you could also kind of. Uh, Let's see, soft eraser. And then race down into it, and you can bust out your little smudge tool. You know, and uh, oops. let me merge those two together. So yeah, and then we could just kind of do other effects with it. Start smearing it around some. But you know, just kind of following uh, the line art like the artist has. You know, and also going in there, um, make sure your pen pressure is set on your brush and you uh, color pick from your flames. And then you can go in and paint on top of it. But yeah, I just wouldn't just, uh, uh, just use the, uh, uh, just use a photo. Like, it's... You're never gonna find a photo that's perfect. You know, it's gonna match the artwork and everything. And if if it's drawn that way, you don't want to sit there and change it all of a sudden, because otherwise, what did the what did the penciler spend all that time on for? What the inker, you know, uh, you're just gonna end up upsetting people. But uh, yeah, it's one way to do it. Um, like we'll go to. Just doing the selections and stuff. Um, colors. And I think, uh, you know, start off with the flames first. It's kind of like how we did the explosions. Um, we have our color. Let's go ahead and just darken that a little bit more. And we'll go, uh, the brightest point is going to be here. And then it's going to go just kind of trail off. So I'm just kind of blocking in you know, really loosely how this is going to work out. It's kind of following the lines of the of the, uh, the artwork. We're going to get into the fun bit of uh, selecting all this stuff here. So it's not as uh, as difficult as it seems. You know, we'll set the flames up on its own uh, on its own layer again. We'll lock it. So it doesn't matter if our lasso goes over the uh, the skull in the background and everything like that. Uh, so again, you know, just kind of go in. And don't worry too much about like, oh, how's this one selection going to look? Because it's, it's not going to just be one selection. We're going to be building it up a lot. So we can go in, we got a little bit here selected. We start laying down some airbrush.
Oops. And again, you don't have to overthink it. Uh, you know, is this going to look like fire? Because, I mean, how does fire look? You know, every fire is going to it's going to look different, have its own uh, have its own characteristics. So I think uh, people a lot of times are too worried about it. Um, you know, is this selection okay and everything? And just keep on undoing, redo, undo. Uh, you know, let me lay this airbrush back in there and the end of the day you don't really get any work done so it's always important just to just to go with it and you could always make adjustments later on I think that's one of the things I definitely learned from uh, coloring with markers first, doing color guides, and then going to the computer. Uh, I'm pretty sure if I just started on the computer, yeah, like the undo shortcut would be like my best friend ever. These bigger areas, we'll just do like one big selection right now. Again, just kind of uh, setting up the flow and then uh, as we get to lighter colors, we'll cut back in and uh, cut that area up a little bit more. Keep on hitting that control B shortcut. I would disable it, but I use it so much, so I can't really do that. But it does get annoying after a while. What it is, I'm using my shortcuts, and sometimes I do them too fast, my, my hands aren't in the right position. Like a, a, a little bit off and I always end up with that and then trying to lay down lay down the color instead of picking up a different color I didn't want in the first place and you know, it's just a bit of a hassle All right, so I think that settles it for that color. This will all be brighter, so it's not a big deal. Um, let's go in and add a little bit more yellow to it, I guess, and see what this color looks like. Yeah, I think that'll work. So just keep your selections nice and loose. You see here, I'm trying to start to break up these big areas a little bit.
go again. Yeah, it's a little bit of a time-consuming process, but I think you guys are getting the getting the gist of it here. Uh, let's see. Maybe we'll just do like one more one more shade. Lost my selection. Let me see here. How's that color look? Yeah, that'll work. Just keep in mind as well, like when you're coloring fire at the warmest point, it's usually going to be white. already tell from all these oranges and stuff I'm gonna hit it the little bit of the uh, little bit of the dodge tool I don't really uh, pick up a lot of colors as well add some add some nice variations in it just like you would see in uh, in fire so I think the uh, the dodge tool does has have has its uses uses can't even talk right now um, but yeah, just uh, just remember not to overdo it. You don't want that uh, banding in your in your colors or anything. This would be the hottest area here coming out of his mouth. So just get some more yellow going down here. Almost done.
Again, my hands being too quick. So I think that uh, that looks pretty good. I'm just kind of a little bit more yellow down here. Um, yeah. Okay, let's go in with the, like I said, a little bit of the dodge tool. Um, let's have it set to 100%, but you can play around with it. Um, the airbrush is on, so it's all pressure sensitive. But that'll, you know, it's kind of dabbing on it a little bit here and there. Uh, just kind of bring out some, some extra hot spots here. I'll just add a little bit more depth to it. Um, Let's go ahead and we'll flatten that down. Let's color the skull as well, why not? Uh, and put him on a separate layer now. So most of this is gonna have a very bright rim light around the edges from the uh, from the fire. So let's get that out of the way first. Let's do a, uh, let's get that color. Yeah, I think we could even go white with it. It's gonna be so bright. So much, uh, so much flame going on. I think. Even the bottom jaw. Be all in white. Cut in a little bit here and there. And the teeth. I think for the rest of it, we just won't go as bright as the uh, as the white. But it will be will be lit up though. This all come together as well when we put our we put our glow on it. See, in a case like this with this piece, because there's so much uh, so much artwork that would get knocked out. Like I, I, I wouldn't bother. I just do it all like with the with the glow on top of everything. Because to have to go through here and decipher what's what and what line art you're going to color and what you're not, it's going to take way too long. And uh, you know you don't want to you don't want to go crazy trying to do it. So yeah, I'm just going to hit that with a little bit of dodge, like in the middle of the forehead. Uh, it's really going to add, you know, brings out a little bit of yellow in that color and makes it look really nice. So to finish it off, we'll just do another layer on top again. Set it to set it to uh, lighten or screen. Sometimes one works better than the other one. And then we'll just go ahead with our... Uh, actually, let's go with the red. Let's see how that looks first.
and just follow the uh, just follow the flames along. Add in the uh, glows to to the uh, to the fire here and there. I think you definitely want to hit up the skull. Get a lot of warmth in there, and the, that line art is down here as well. In the eyes. So that's really going to make that pop. Kind of hitting random random areas, a little bit of orange in there as well. Again, just giving like some uh, some different variations. But uh, yeah, I think that's gonna do it for this episode. Um, there's a lot to cover. Hopefully, the episode didn't come up too long. I forgot to keep track. Um, but yeah, if you have any uh, questions or comments, you leave them here on the on this video uh, or drop them to me on my Divin Art account. Um, yeah, same thing, like I said earlier with the uh, Q&A video that I'm tr I want to put together. Um, you know, probably with those, especially me on my DeviantArt account, it probably might be a lot easier to put them all together from there instead of having to search through all the different videos. But, um, yeah, if you like what you saw, please hit, hit, please hit the like button. And uh, if you're not a subscriber yet, please subscribe. You know, our uh, viewership is growing uh, every day, and I'd like to thank everybody for that. And if you have any questions or suggestions for other stuff you want to see, just let me know. And I'll talk to you guys soon. All right, thanks for watching. Bye.